New York psychotherapist Damon Jacobs is gay. He's doing what many others aren't, taking a pill called Truvada. I explained to my doctor, I'm having a more difficult time staying consistent with condoms than before. And here is this medication that could be more than 90% effective if taken every day. He's such a fan, he started this Facebook page promoting it. PrEP has been shown to be safe and effective in preventing HIV infection when taken. But other gay men are less enthusiastic about Truvada, also called PrEP. For now, getting people to know more about Truvada is clearly an uphill battle for Damon. It's also a personal one. Two of his friends recently died from HIV AIDS, and he doesn't want to lose anyone else. That was Al Jazeera's Roxana Saberi reporting. And Damon Jacobs, who we just heard from in Roxana's piece, is a licensed family therapist and advocate of Truvada who joins us live in our studio this morning. Um, first of all, Damon, I'm sorry that you lost two friends recently um, to AIDS. Is there a generational divide, you think, in the gay community when it comes to taking this preventative pill? Well, there certainly can be a generational divide amongst the first, what we call the first wave survivors of people that were uh, survived that first hit of HIV and AIDS in the early 1980s who are still rightfully coping with trauma and, and de from that devastation. And some of the people in that generation have been opposed to this newer HIV prevention strategy. Um, versus, and why is that? Well, because I think in their minds, condomless sex, condomless intimacy is equated with devastation and trauma. And they're still reacting in 2014 to something that happened in 1984. So they believe that people that take this pill will not use condoms. They believe that, Is yes. that necessarily the case? Doesn't the CDC say they should be used in concert? The data shows that people using uh, Truvada for PrEP are not necessarily likely to give up condoms if they're already using them consistently. Okay. People who are already using condoms in 2014 are continuing to use them. The problem is most people are not using condoms. This is one of the dirty little secrets in the gay community is that most people have already given up condoms long before PrEP became available and long before we knew about it. So but the people that are not using using condoms are not using condoms. But could this stand, the daily use of this pill, could it stand to mean that less people use condoms and perhaps engage in behavior they might not have engaged in otherwise? In other words, could it lead to complacency in the gay community? It could potentially lead to complacency, but here's what we understand about Travada's PrEP. Taken every single day, seven days a week, the way I use it, it's 99% effective. It is now, where do you get the 99%? Because the CDC says 92% reduced risk. Are you seeing that somewhere else? Right. Based on the, uh, the historical IPREC study, whose results were released in late 2010, Based on that research, what they were able to do was go back and see the measurable amounts of people who took it every day versus people who took it six days a week, four days a week, and zero days a week. Mm. The people who took it seven days a week, who had the maximal amount of medicine in their system, had not a single, not a single HIV infection in that group. What it does for the patient, or for what I like to call the consumer, who may consider using PrEP, is that ultimately this will take away some of the stigma and some of the shame that we who use PrEP have to deal with when we decide to be responsible about pre preventing HIV in this way. I started using PrEP in July of 2011 because my own sexual practices had begun to include condoms less and less and less. And I knew that I could be at risk for HIV. When I started being able to enjoy intimate encounters without fear, it was like the biggest weight was lifted, and I didn't even know that weight had been there for so many years. Moment of truth here. You were a counselor. You actively sought Truvada out. Yeah, I sure did. Here's the thing. So I have been, I'm HIV negative. I have dated guys who are positive for, well, the first guy I knowingly dated positive was about 20 years ago. And even back then, there was a lot of controversy around sexual activity between men who are negative, men who are positive. I learned the science. I found out how effective condoms were, how they could be used effectively, and I talked to people about it to stay negative. 20 years later, I learned about <laughs> PrEP. Yeah. And it's, yes, it's true that there's not been a lot of information in our community, but GMHC held a forum in um, early in 2011. And at that time, um, I was coming to the end of a six-year relationship, getting back out in the dating field, getting back into the flirting, cruising world, and found that a lot had changed, that people were not using condoms the way they once had. People were not using condoms, people didn't want to use condoms, and to be honest with you, I didn't want to use condoms either. 
And I found that after all these years, all, all men at home, so straight safe, and gay, are like yes, after all so these long. years, right? Of being so safe and so careful, I was finding myself in this sort of confound, this confusing place of knowing how to prevent HIV but not being as consistent as I had. Yeah. Suddenly, I found out that GMHC was having a forum with some of the researchers about the results of the IPREX study, which I know we're about to discuss. I learned that there was a pill that I could take proactively that would protect myself from HIV that was believed to be about 90% effective. I thought about it, I learned some more, I had a discussion with my doctor, and we decided that for me at this time in my life, this was the right strategy to it maintain being HIV negative. In addition to condoms or as a supplement? To as a supplement. We're not talking about a replacement for condoms. Um, PrEP is not a cure. It is not the prevention measure. It is a prevention measure. It is a strategy. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you because I'm not going to lie. Do I use condoms the way I did before PrEP? No. You know, imagine you wait 20 years to drive a new car and you <laughs> finally get the keys to that new car. You're going to want to take that new car out for a spin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have not used condoms as consistently as I was, but at least now compared to before using PrEP, if I'm not using condoms, I have this extra protection, which I did not have before. Is it 100% safe? No. Am I more safe now? Do I feel more empowered now? Yes. This is the first of four public forums that GMHC is sponsoring to discuss HIV prep. I love talking about this because, you know, for those who aren't familiar, Michael Weinstein has been um, vigilant against HIV re prevention research, not just prep. I mean, he was vigilant against vaccine research as well. He's just against prevention, period. And he is the leader of the largest aid service organizations in the U.S. I, I can only speculate on his motives for that. Uh, what I can say is that his, he's pretty, um, he just reminds me of an annoying mosquito. He does, as much as he left, foams at the mouth and goes on and on and on and has all his campaigns that are very anti-sex and very anti-PrEP, in spite of all that, PrEP still passed through the FDA there's still relatively good adherence that has been found in the early data. There are still relatively little side effects. Things are still going forward medically. All insurance is paying for this. California Medicaid just lifted one of the restrictions they had in his home state to make it more accessible for people on Medicaid in the state of California. The state of Washington just made it more accessible for people on Medicaid. So it's like he's going to scream and he's going to cry and he's going to whine and he's going to say what he's going to say. I, I, the more I look at him and the more I see him, I get the sense that it's just more for attention than anything else because he keeps changing his mind. In November of 2013, in a public forum, he said he believes in PrEP. He believes in PrEP. He said that people who take PrEP every day have a near zero chance of becoming HIV positive. He said that in a forum. The guy is for PrEP. But then, as you all can read, six months later, he says something different. That indicates to me somebody who's unstable and just really attention-seeking more than anything else. Well, I began using pre-exposure prophylaxis, also known as PrEP, on July 19th, 2011. Um, this was after having come out as gay in the early 1990s in San Francisco, which was a time when knowing people with AIDS meant losing people with AIDS. And I understood very early how crucial the condom message was and how crucial condoms were in preventing HIV. But as time went on and as more effective treatments became available, I noticed that my own sexual practices had changed somewhat. Um, my consistency with condom use had changed somewhat. Um, by 2011, as a long-term relationship came to an end, as I was turning 40, um, I was starting to have those thoughts like, well, if I became HIV positive right now, that wouldn't be the thing that would take me out. There's a lot of other risk factors in my family for cancer-related illnesses, and I just didn't think and don't believe that HIV would be the thing that's gonna knock me out if I were to get it. And I realized that that was the kind of relationship to HIV that a lot of friends and clients had had um, before they became positive, that HIV and AIDS began to be considered a when, not an if. And I understood the danger of that perception and that relationship to AIDS and HIV. So around that time, I started to learn about the results of the IPREX study. This was in the first half of 2011. I came right here to GMHC, learned a whole bunch about IPREX, about the 90, what was under, at that time understood to be 92% efficacy of PrEP. 
and had a discussion with my doctor about that. I told him why I believed I was at risk for HIV and I told him my concerns um, about my perception of HIV, about my own behavior changing, and that I thought this would be the right intervention for me. G gratefully, thankfully, he agreed and said, yeah, this is the right thing for you. And that is when I started using it. Well, there is absolutely a stigma for people that are open about having condomless sex. Now, we know from studies, and I know from my own personal experience, that about 90% of sexual encounters are condomless. But there is a stigma, and there's a lot of shame and fear about talking about that openly. It's one of the dirty little secrets in the gay community right now. Because a lot of people who are also having condomless sex will judge their friends who are open about having condomless sex. When I first began using PrEP, I wasn't using condoms consistently the way I had in the many years prior. Uh, but when I began using PrEP, I still used them sometimes in conjunction with condoms because I still had a hard time wrapping my mind around the possibility that this thing was for real. So I wasn't always using condoms, but I still did sometimes. I am going to honestly say that my experience of using condoms ended about a year and a half ago um, with partners, that's with partners I know, partners that I don't know so well. Um, I get in some trouble for saying that, but I don't care. Uh, because it's real and it is my experience. I am HIV negative, I have not had an STD, and I do have condomless sex with people who I have sex with. The science is there. What we haven't had, there's no national platform in the U.S. that's talking about this. Um, the larger political organizations like the Human Rights Commission or GLAAD or the Gay Lesbian National uh, Task Force, they're not talking about this. They're kind of washed their hands off AIDS and HIV issues, period. So they could be potential sources of discussion, but they're not having it. Um, most of our national organizations around HIV and AIDS are all dealing with treatment, which is really, really important, and advocacy for access for people with, who are positive to medicines, and that is so important. But they're not really talking about this either. So the information, the limited information most people have, has been somewhat scattered, somewhat piecemeal, um, and it's not really been organized or presented with the type of um, authority and continuity and um, evidence that that I've had the pleasure of seeing that I share with other people on my Facebook group, which is called PrEP Facts, Rethinking HIV Prevention and Sex.